Hi, we are now going to start our study of circular motion, objects that move in a circular path. When we first start looking at moving objects, we focus on straight line motion. Why do we do that? Because it is easy to start studying. But even as a baby, you probably had toys that went in circular paths like this. I am sure that you have tied a ball to a rope and whirled it around your head. The ball moves in a circular path. The moon goes around the earth in a circular orbit. The earth goes around the sun in almost a circular orbit. Circular paths are all around us. Lots and lots of objects move in circular orbits. So understanding circular motion is going to be super important. And the first thing that we need to understand when we start with circular motion is angular displacement. Here I have a particle that is moving in a circle of radius r. You can see that when the particle is going around, it is traveling on the circumference. In time t, from a it travels to b. So suppose I want to ask, how has it moved? How much distance has it moved? Can I say a b? No, that would mean the chord a to b. Right? Straight line. Is that how it moved? No, it moved on the circumference. So, if you want to talk about the distance it has moved, we need the arc length L. So, the particle travels a distance equal to this arc length L. So, that is one way to talk about how the particle has moved from A to B. But there is a better way to talk about it by looking at the angle that the radius has turned by. So, this is delta theta. So, we can say the radius has turned by an angle delta theta from A's position to B's position. This delta theta is called the angular displacement. Angular displacement tells us the angle turned by the radius. It does not tell us the position of the object finally or the position of the object initially. Well, you can say it is at B finally. But where is B? B could be anywhere. Okay. And if I just told you delta theta was 40 degrees, that is not enough because it is 40 degrees from the initial position. But how do I talk about the initial position or the final position? For this, we need the angular position. To describe the particle's location, we use angular position. Now, angular position must be measured from something that is fixed. What is a good fixed way to measure things? X axis, Y axis. So, we are going to use X axis, Y axis and we will measure angular position from the X axis. We will use X axis as the fixed starting point and measure angles from there. So, initially it was at A. So, that means we are going to measure starting from here and we will use angles in degrees. Later, we will start using radians. So, we will be measuring the angle from the X axis to the initial position. So, that is theta i. So, maybe theta i is 30 degrees. So, you can say A's position, initial position of the particle is 30 degrees, 30 degrees. Okay. Now, B, which is the final position, again you measure from the x-axis like that. So, we will say theta f. So, B's position is theta f. There is a convention that you must keep in mind. All these angles are taken in the anti-clockwise direction as being positive. So, if you are going to measure things this way, then we will take the angle as positive. But if you measure the angle this way, clockwise, then we will take the angle as being negative. It's just a convention, but a very important convention. So, 30 degrees like this, that will be plus 30. But if I go this way, 30 degrees, then I will be calling it minus 30 as the position of the particle angular position of the particle. So, we use angular position to talk about where the particle is in the beginning theta i, in the end theta f. Now, you can say, but uh, I can be here by maybe moving like this from the x axis. Let us say I moved 70 degrees, but I could have moved all the way around and reached it. That is also possible. I could have gone one way around, right? So, if I reached b, I have reached the same place. But I started here, went around and I reached there. One revolution is 360 degrees. So, I started here, went like that and then went there, right? So, this is 360 degrees plus 70. 
So, can I say the angular position of B is 430 degrees? Yes, it depends on whether you went once like this and just stopped there, that is 70 degrees, or you went like this, then reached B that way, in which case the angular position will be 430 degrees. You just keep adding up the angles as you keep going around. You may reach the same place, but after one revolution, then remember you have to add the 360 degrees. Let us not confuse matters right now. Let us keep things simple because the same principles will work whether you went two rounds or three rounds or one round or just went there straight. It really doesn't matter. Okay. So, from here to there, let us say that was theta f. This is theta i. So, what is the angular displacement? Angular displacement. Displacement. The word displacement means change in place. Angular displacement is the change in the angular position. Okay. So, angular displacement is the change in angular position. So, delta theta is the final angular position minus initial angular position. Delta theta is theta f minus theta i. Okay. So, remember that when you are measuring the angles anticlockwise, it has to be taken as positive. When you are measuring it clockwise, it has to be taken as negative. So, the sign convention is going to be very important. Using the correct signs, you can then write delta theta is the final angular position minus initial angular position.